Hello, Clinic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews. Welcome to our third pharmacology video. Remember, in the description of the video are the 50 farm drugs. I guess that means the same thing. The 50 drugs that you need to know for the NCLEX. Each one of these videos is going to cover five questions, which covers about five drugs. Although there's other drugs in the question as distractors that sometimes we cover a little bit. All right, are you ready to get started? We're going to do five questions now. So let me go ahead and bring this up. Here we go. I think you can see that well enough if I do this. All right. You're caring for a patient admitted with heart failure. Following meds have been ordered. Furosemide, lisinopril, carvedilol. Which of the following assessments will you report to the health care provider? So if you watch the prioritization videos that we have on our channel, you know that we report unexpected findings to the health care provider, unexpected findings. So we're looking for unexpected things. So we have to compare each one of these findings with what we know about the patient. So BNP of 21,000, three plus pitting ankle and calf edema, crackles in the lungs or creatinine of 1.8. All right. So let's look at these and compare them to what we know about the patient. The BNP is elevated and elevated BNP is an indicator of heart failure. Well, they were admitted with heart failure. So an elevated BNP is not unexpected. It's expected. We expect the BNP to be elevated. So we're not going to call about that. Can you imagine calling the doctor? Yes, we just, I just wanted to let you know the BNP is 21,000. They were admitted with heart failure. Uh, what do I expect you to do about that? I, I mean, uh, I guess I just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Okay. Three plus pitting ankle and calf edema. So they're admitted with heart failure, y'all. That's expected. And they have tw furosemide, 20 milligrams IV push every eight hours. So what are you going to call about? Can I please get an order for furosemide? Oh, wait a minute. I already have one. Yeah, never mind. Okay. So we're not going to call about that. Crackles in the lung bases. They've got heart failure and we've already got furosemide ordered. What are we calling about that for? That's expected. Creatinine 1.8. All right. Creatinine in a 1.8 is not expected with heart failure. In fact, it's a complication of heart failure because if the cardiac output is reduced so much that we're not perfusing our kidneys and the creatinine level can go up. And the problem is, is lisinopril, if you don't know this, lisinopril is contraindicated with kidney failure. So if this is a farm question, the key thing here is to know Lisinopril is contraindicated with kidney or with kidney disease or kidney failure or elevated creatinine. All right, so the correct answer is creatinine of 1.8. We report unexpected findings, so that's not expected. <clears throat> Next question: Your patient is taking methotrexate for her rheumatoid arthritis. Which lab would you monitor closely? So this is something, this could be a side effect. So it doesn't mean we're going to stop the med, but we're going to watch this lab knowing that it could change. We don't want it to change too much. Okay. So methotrexate, rheumatoid arthritis, if you don't know this, write it down. If you're taking notes, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disorder. Autoimmune means the immune system is attacking your own body. So the immune system is supposed to recognize self and it's supposed to be fine with the self, right? That's me. That, that's me. Don't be attacking me. You're my immune system. So it, it attacks non-self. That's what it attacks. That's why the immune system is our number one defense against cancer. The immune system is our number one defense against cancer. The, the thought is that our, our cells, there's problems with a lot of our cells in our body, but the immune system... <sighs> gobbles them up and they never turn into cancer. So if rheumatoid heart is autoimmune and that means the immune system is attacking me, then I've got to suppress the immune system, y'all. So anytime we're, we're, we're treating an autoimmune disorder, we're suppressing the immune system. So that's why the white blood cell count is, is what you have to monitor. So it doesn't mean if it goes down, it doesn't mean you're going to stop the methotrexate. What it means is that, Hey, um, yeah, I got to watch this carefully and see. We don't want it to get too low. All right. You're caring for a patient who has NPO for an EGD today, esophago gastro duodenoscopy. That's where they go down through the mouth and look into the stomach, the esophagus, the stomach, and the duodenum. 
She is diagnosed with Hashimoto's type 2 diabetes and GERD. Which of the following meds would you make sure to give her this morning? Pantoprazole, multivitamin, levothyroxine, and metformin. So the idea is that she's NPO, so we don't want to give her her meds because she's NPO, right? Especially since we're looking in the stomach. But there's there must be one of these that I really need to give her. Now, <clears throat> GERD, so we think, well, type 2 diabetes, right? So multivitamin, so I'm going to cross that one out cross that one off. I hope everybody's okay with crossing multivitamin out. So the question is, does she really need to take her protonics, pantoprazole for her GERD? Does she really need to take her levothyroxine for her Hashimoto's? Or does she really need to take her metformin for her type 2 diabetes? And here's the rule, is that Hashimoto's is hypothyroidism. If you don't know that, write it down, make sure you know it. Hashimoto's is hypothyroidism. And if you can remember, hypothyroidism is hypometabolism. So think Hashimoto's, hypomoto, hypothyroidism, hypometabolism. I'll say it one more time. Hashimoto's, hypomoto, hypothyroidism, hypometabolism. So... For someone who's hypermetabolic, that means they're not burning calories as much. They tend to be lethargic. Um, they tend to struggle with obesity or being overweight. They're cold all the time because they're not burning calories, right? So this is a person who we do not, well, well, first of all, they're not, they're, they're hypothyroid, so they're not making thyroid hormone. So the only way they're getting thyroid hormone is because we are giving it to them. So if they're already prone to lethargy, then if I don't give them their thyroid hormone and they're going down for an EGD, which I'm going to have to give them something that's going to cause drowsiness for the EGD. We don't, we don't give them anesthesia, but we definitely give them meds that cause a lot of drowsiness. So I'm going to give them meds that cause drowsiness and they're going to have trouble waking up if they don't have any thyroid hormone in their body because they're already prone to lethargy anyway. So... I have to give the thyroid hormone, I have to give it before the EGD. Okay, I hope that makes sense to everybody. Okay, you observe your patient with a fine rhythm. Well, let's make that a little bigger so you can see it. All right, so you've got, and if you don't know EKGs, go back and, and watch under cardiac, go back and watch our, my EKG um, videos, okay? So here we have, you observe the following rhythm, you notify the healthcare provider, which medication would you expect to give? So here, this, this first beat right here, not the one that's kind of going off the page on the left, but the very first beat you have, let me see if I, I don't think I can make it really any bigger. I really don't think I can, maybe a little bit. Okay, I can make it a little bit bigger. All right, so that first beat is a sinus beat. You have an upright P wave and narrow QRS and a T wave, right? So that's a sinus beat. The second beat is a sinus beat. And then all of a sudden you have this wide, bizarre looking beat. That's a ventricular beat. Then you have a sinus beat and another sinus beat and then this wide, bizarre beat that's a ventricular beat. And then you have a sinus beat and a sinus beat and then this wide, bizarre. So this is this is actually uh, trigeminy because every third beat is a ventricular beat. So this is actually trigeminy. Okay, so here we've got trigeminy. So the question is, what medications do we give for trigeminy? Aminophilin, adenosine, atropine, amiodarone. And it's funny, not all cardiac drugs start with an A, but a lot of cardiac drugs start with an A. Now, the only one here that's not a cardiac drug is aminophilin. Aminophilin is a respiratory drug. So adenosine, you need to know these. If you don't know them, y'all, you got to know them. Adenosine is for supraventricular tachycardia, SVT. Atropine is for bradycardia. Amiodarone is for ventricular dysrhythmias. So if you don't know that, you have to know adenosine for SVT, atropine for bradycardia, and amiodarone for ventricular dysrhythmias. Okay, so that's the drug you would expect to give, amiodarone. All right, last question for this video. You observe your patient in the following rhythm. Well, this one's not as hard to see. So we got four beats. Uh, we do have our three second notches. You see at the top of that strip, you have these notches that are kind of going down. From one notch to the next is three notches. So we have a six second strip here. The, the far left beat 
is outside of the six seconds. So the heart rate here is actually 40. Now we have an upright P wave, a narrow QRS, and a T wave. So it's a sinus rhythm, but it's slow. So it's sinus bradycardia. Their blood pressure is low. Their oxygen saturation is 93% on two liters. You call the doctor, which medication do you expect to give? Okay. Do you remember from the last one, we talked about what each one was? You remember we talked about that? Atropine is for symptomatic bradycardia. Symptomatic bradycardia is not just bradycardia. It's when the blood pressure is also low. Again, if you don't understand this, go back and watch the pressure and perfusion videos. I talk about low blood pressure um, and how it becomes low. So make sure you watch that. So atropine is the drug of choice for symptomatic bradycardia. So that's the end of this five. That went fast. I don't know. Is it just me? Did it really go fast? I don't know. Hey, we are the best NCLEX review business out there, in my opinion. Make sure you go to Clinic Reviews for, to look for our latest reviews that are posted and up and ready. We're getting ready for next gen, working hard on that. So I hope you have a great rest of your day.